On the way up, I don't mind missing a play. I'm, I'm never just gonna chase a stock. No stock is good enough for me to just say, hey, I wanna risk so much. On the way down, I'm trying to exit, you know, with a reasonable amount. I mean, there's also another play where if the breakout fails and you get like a market panic because a lot of people use market orders. This is the thing, so when one of these little junkers starts running, uh, a bunch of other ones do. Um, you know, this one's trading 80 million shares a day, this one's running, it's really not my specialty. But I'll tell you the, the one blaring dif difference between this one and TTCM. TTCM was a nice multi-month yeah. breakout. This so, one so has this a nasty long-term yeah, chart. Let me, let me show them real quick. So the reason, notice the difference, okay, you're ready on TTCM. Notice what's happening here, you know, a week ago. It, it looks just like PCTL right here, okay? When I bring up PCTL, it looks like it right here. But when we're trading this thing, is way over here after it's already broke out. So now let me bring up PCTL, and you'll see it's, it looks just like TTCM before the move started. So, you know, it's just, we look for breaking, so... I mean, if it's a week from now and this thing's 12 cents, different story. But I mean, man, you can just end up in so many of these stocks that just never go anywhere. So we don't, we don't anticipate, we react. Once it's breaking out for real, like TTCM, that's when you trade them. Otherwise, you'll just end up in the stock till you die and it'll never go anywhere. You know, so many penny stocks just never come back. Yeah, but the chart sucks, man. I mean, it's just dead, you know? <laughs> I mean, you're right, the volume is there, agreed, but the, but the price action isn't there. So, yeah, it's up today 113%, but the other thing is, you know, it's just, what is, I'm, I'm too dumb. Well, I'm just looking on, on Twitter, and it's very, you know, they're presenting at a conference, Somebody big is supposedly involved. It's typical, you know. Don't be confused by the. That's know, only it's only traded 1.6 million yeah, dollars of stock. Don't be confused by the the overall volume. I mean, this is a two cent stock, so we're talking about a million dollars. Yep. I could buy the whole company right now if I really thought it would be that good. <laughs> 1.3 million, Tim. Yeah, yeah. We, we we should do that. What, what what's the prospect? No, no. You don't just buy random companies. We reverse merge it. You know. No. Trade like a sniper. <laughs> take small gains. But that that would be the big thing. And, and you're right. Great, good eye spotted 90 million shares. But when you're talking about these true penny stocks, look at the dollar value. I mean, 1.6 million dollars a day is not enough. They could be five guys trading that thing today. So. It's tough for me to buy just a random stock that's spiking. They spike for so many different reasons. There's so many different chat rooms. Uh, most of the chat rooms in penny stock land and, and finance um, and, and stock picking newsletters like exist where they're just like, buy this hot pick. And that lasts while, you know, the subscribers buy, but then there's no real reason. So I don't want anyone following my picks. The reason why I share it, the reason why I trade with a small account, the reason why I donate all my trading profits to charity is because I want to show you the process. So for me, the process matters. And the process never includes buying a random stock that's spiking and not knowing why. I need to know the catalyst. Yep. Now, now, the, that's, now, the biggest thing you want to look for is float rotation. So if you're trading that 2 million float stock, you want to see it rotate in the float you know, 5, 10 times a day. So trading huge volume relative to the float. But I totally agree with Tim. Remember, people, especially in, in, in this day and age, you know, the, tr the traditional pump and dump doesn't exist. But we've got Twitter and we got chat rooms. And people love a reason to get into a stock. So the, the low floaters that tend to fail are the ones that don't have any sort of news. Look for something. Now it can be complete BS, but look for something. Because the ones, if you're in there pre-market and there's a low float stock moving, if there's nothing for people to believe in, then those are the spikes that tend to fail. And again, you know, you, and you'll get two or three of them a week with news these days. So if you're under the PVT, I mean, it's not like you gotta find one every day. But it just goes back to, to remembering, all of these companies will fail. Yep. Almost all of these will be zero or close to zero in the next few years. So you don't want to believe in any company. You need them to prove themselves first. Why should you put in your money and time into this piece of <laughs> It needs a catalyst. It needs news. You know, because news, not just for the sake of news, like, oh, it's good to buy a stock with a catalyst, news spreads, okay? With TTCM, it had the perfect multi-month breakout, it had the volume, it had the good price action, but it also had a press release. 
and that press release got shared. And the press release said, look, we have a new augmented reality social network. Then people started imagining how yeah. big this augmented social just, media just, network was. Just for reference, so that press release came out on the 12th, okay? So this is what I, I call, you know, Tim and I have different terms, but see, this is what I call building the case, okay? So you've got the breakout on the 12th, you've got high volume on the 12th, and you've got that news. So now, back to your question about which ones do we trade, I mean, that's, you got, you got a lot of positives there. Breakout, high volume, news, augmented reality. You know, it's a hot, they make like a weird Pokemon Go type thing, but, but it's buzzword. They're so, having a scavenger hunt on August 25th, if you guys are interested. Where is it? I know. In the, in the... In the augmented reality there space. You, spin you it can off. do it from your own living room. I don't know. On the way up, I don't mind missing a play. I'm, I'm never just going to chase a stock. No stock is good enough for me to just say, hey, I want to risk so much. On the way down, I'm trying to exit, you know, with a reasonable amount. I mean, there's also another play where if the breakout fails and you get like a market panic because a lot of people use market orders, you get a little bounce. I don't know if you can see, if you can point the... Uh, Yep. was the market open. Okay, this yeah. dropped to 41. There, yeah. This dropped to 41 and bounced to 50 cents in a few minutes. Um, I miss this this dip buy, but I mean that's this is a 25% bounce. It doesn't look like much on the chart, but this is like you know you could buy literally. It probably wouldn't get it right at 41, but you could buy 10,000 shares, let's say at 42. So $4,200 investment, and you sell it at 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, and you make a few hundred bucks. So there's usually that opportunity. But the problem with dip buying one day runners as opposed to multi day runners, um, the bounces are usually weak. And this one, like, you know, literally right as we're talking, is taking out the day low. Um, I greatly prefer dip buying multi day winners like TTCM as opposed to this one. And I think that the, the, the answer to the question is again, never ever use market orders in, the, in these types of stocks. If you got to keep moving your limit order to get out, move your limit order. If you use a market order on these types of stocks, you will get hosed every time. And a lot Just keep changing your limit. Yeah. I mean, if you watch Tim and I, we've done it. I mean, we'll sit there and we'll move that limit down to get out, but we'll never do a market order. Yeah, and on the way up. They again, want you to use market they orders. They want you to use market <laughs> orders because the market makers are going to screw you, okay? Like you have a lot of idiots, you have a lot of degenerates, and you have the market makers and the promoters. It's pretty much just a cesspool down here in the gutter of the stock market. And you have to be aware of it, right? You know, like that's what's going on. So a lot of people just use market orders, they get crushed. Um, there are some brokers out there that just use market orders. You get crushed. The way to make money in this niche is to be meticulous, have the right weapon. I use E-Trade and Interact Brokers. Neither of them are truly great. They just suck the least out of all the brokers that I've used. Um, just in case you thought that I was like getting paid by them, I'm not. Um, I just think they suck the least. Um, and that's, that's the, the way to go. Like, if you have the wrong broker, I know there are some brokers that only allow market makers or market orders. I know there are some brokers that don't even allow you to trade this stock. So a lot of people can see the best play, the perfect setup, and they can't even trade it effectively. If I didn't sell this at the open and I'm watching it drop, my entry was 51. Um, so, you know, if it's, it was 57 actually, it got up to right around the market open. I didn't get 57, I got like 55. Um, but if I'm missing that and it goes 54, 53, I'm changing it to 50, um, I'm changing it to 48, because again, I just want to protect myself. I don't care if I lose or make a penny or two on a 50 cent stock. For this one, I was going for the big breakout. I wanted to sell in the 60s or 70s. Did not happen, so then it just became about containment. Um, and you, you know, give it a few cents. Like if the stock is crashing hard from 55 to 51, you don't put your limit right at 50, because it's probably gonna crush through that. Um, so you have to think about what is your loss and how to contain it because you don't want to be in this stock as it's dropping from 50 to 41 and you not have an order in. Gotcha. Hey, Tim Sykes, Millionaire Mentor and Trader. Thank you for watching my videos. I hope that they help you. I want to share everything that I've learned over the years. You can check out more videos right over there and also click subscribe so that you can watch all of these videos, get that knowledge and become my next millionaire student.